Photoshop is full of all sorts of great little tools that photographers either don't know about or don't know how to use, including the mass density slider. So in this tutorial, you'll learn three great ways to use mass density in order to make better looking images in Photoshop. Let's begin by first creating a new brightness contrast adjustment layer. So we have something to work with and explore how layer masks just generally work as a quick recap. Now, if you double click on the mask, you're going to see the layer mask properties, including density and feather. And it's a density slider that we're going to be working with. If you don't get to the properties panel, you can always go up to window properties and you'll have it here. Just make sure you're not on the left tab, which would be the adjustment layer properties. You want the mass properties on the right. Now we're going to come back to this. Let's first make some adjustments. So we we'll have something to work with. I'm going to double click on the adjustment layer and bring up the brightness. And then let's go make some adjustments in the mask. The mask itself is white everywhere. And since white reveals, everything is revealed in the image. Now, if we have this mask selected and hit command or control I to make it black, everything is concealed because black conceals. So it doesn't matter what I do with this adjustment layer now, nothing is going to be visible because of the black mask. However, if I click on the mask, hit B for my brush, and then just go paint with a white brush, now I'm revealing the adjustment in this part of the image, and I can make further adjustments to this layer, and they will always show through the area that I painted on this layer mask. We don't have to just work with black and white though. If I click on this mask, and I go and pick a darker shade of gray, something in the middle here. Now paint again. Notice it's not as strong. I can go and pick something even darker and maybe something down that's pretty close to black, but not fully black. And you can see I still have an adjustment, but it's really kind of faded. If I alt click on the mask, you see the actual paint was white, gray, and a darker gray. And the result was fully visible a little bit less visible, much less visible, and then everything black is totally concealed. So that's the mask as we painted it. Let's alt click and just take a look at these two sliders. Now feather, you probably are familiar with, and it just blurs things. If I bring it to the right, it starts to soften up the result and eventually get to a really smooth blob. But somewhere in here, I might find a result where I don't want a hard edge, but maybe something that's just a little bit softened up. Something like this is smoother at the edges than the original starting point. So feather is a great way of just softening things up if your mask is sort of imperfect or you know the, the targeting is not quite there. Density does something different. Just like feather does nothing when it's at zero pixels, density does nothing when it's at 100%. As I drag the density down, see what's happening to the black values. The blacks are getting brighter, the grays are getting brighter, the whites are not changing. If we move all the way to the left, everything goes to full white. So I'm starting with the mask as I painted it, and I'm making the dark areas brighter until everything goes white. Now, why would you want to do that? Well, you can think of this as enforcing a minimum adjustment. I've already painted in full adjustment here and less here and here. What if I want these other areas that I didn't paint to have some level of adjustment? Well, I can bring in the density and that ensures a sort of a minimum amount that I'm going to see this adjustment. In this case, not very useful. So let's delete this layer. And let's do a real adjustment to see this in action. So with this image, I'm thinking that I want to make the sky a bit more yellow on the right hand side, show a little bit more glow of the sun about to appear over the horizon. So I'm going to go and create a new solid color adjustment, go picking up, let's say a uh, pretty strong orange value here. So I've got this very strong orange for the sun and I'm going to change the blend mode over to overlay. So obviously this is way too strong, but it also has a couple other problems. I want to have it more affecting the highlights than the shadows. We'll have to address that. And I want to more affect the right-hand side of the image than the left-hand side. And that's what the layer mask will do for us. Let's first take care of the, the problem with the shadows. An easy way to knock out the shadows is just to add a blend if. We can double click on the layer and just alt click to split the underlying slider. And that's going to target the highlights more than the shadows. So that's given us a nice improvement to hit the sky areas. Now we want to hit the right hand side of the image. So let's click on our layer mask and let's start with black. So we hit command I to invert. So everything's concealed. And now I want to make things brighter on the right than on the left, which is a great opportunity to use a gradient. So I'm going to click on the gradient tool, make sure I'm on radial, hitting D for my default black and white paint. And I can just click from the right, drag to the left. And when I let go, I get this sphere if I click the mask, you can see it created this sphere, which is white in the center and black on the outer edges, which means that I'm fully revealing the adjustment on the right hand side, 
less so here and not at all over here. So I've biased it towards the right-hand side, but I still want to even things out. And that's why we're going to want mask density to fill in some of these areas. So what we can do is double click our mask, bring our density down. If we bring it like halfway or so, you can see how it's starting to fill out the sky here. Didn't make this any stronger. It just took the areas that didn't have an adjustment and made them have some degree of color adjustment while still retaining that bias towards the right. If I move it all the way to the left, then it's uniform white. And now we have the adjustment everywhere. So somewhere in the middle here is going to be a nice place where it looks better than the original. The original here was too biased to the right. Now in the middle, we've evened out the result a bit across the image. So you can see how mass density is a great way of working with color grading. It's still too strong of a result, and we can easily finish this by just taking the opacity down to something like 30%. And now take a look at what we've done from before to after. We've had this nice glow that we've applied through a blend mode and a blend if to hit the highlights, but then a layer mask to hit the right-hand side of the image. And you then finished it by using mass density to make sure that the left-hand side of the image had some degree of the color grading, even though the right-hand side has more to reflect the sun being over on that side of the image. So that's one great way of using the uh, mass density slider. Let's take a look at another example for noise reduction. Now in this image, I've got a considerable amount of noise because the image was shot on a slightly older camera with a little bit higher ISO. And I definitely want to reduce the noise in the image. At the same time, I probably don't want to reduce the noise in the structure as much as the sky. So I'm going to want a mask to help control things. Let's go apply some noise reduction by going up to filter, go to camera raw filter, go over to the detail tab, and then let's just zoom in so we can see what we're playing with. And I'm going to take the noise reduction up to 40, 50. I think 50 is pretty good here. You can see the sky is looking really pretty clean. Of course, these areas of detail have lost some detail and we'll have to fix that with a layer mask or a filter mask in this case. So I'll say OK to apply it. And let's just look from before with noise everywhere to after with the uniform noise reduction coming through our white filter mask. And just like a layer mask controls the visibility of the layer, a filter mask controls the visibility of the filter. In this case, the camera off filters noise reduction is being applied everywhere. So what we want is some kind of a filter that's going to help hit the blue areas of the sky without hitting the rest of the image. And an easy way to do that is actually using the color button in Lumenzia. We can just choose to hit science and blues for our sky color. And if we click on filter, it's going to apply the result to the filter mask here. So I'll click on filter and you can see that we've created this mask. If I alt click it, you can see that it's targeting the areas of sky and not this structure. Now I'd still like to push this much closer to white. It's too dark. So we can quickly go up to image adjustments levels and do a levels adjustment, just bring in the white. So now we're making this much stronger here. And don't worry about the fact there's some noise embedded in the mask itself. It really doesn't matter. Uh, we're just trying to get the targeting here. It's going to be all looking great in a second. So we'll say, okay, alt click on the mask. And you can see now we've got noise reduction in the sky, but not in the structure. And if we just turn this off, it'll hide this. So here's the original with no noise reduction. And then after hitting command Z to undo, you can see how nicely it improves the sky. The problem is that it doesn't really make sense to have such a clean sky when there's this much noise in the structure. So we want to balance things out without applying the full amount of noise reduction here. So once again, mass density is going to come to the rescue. Let's double click on our mask and we can bring the density down. And as we do so, see how the it's, it's lightening up the mask and it's applying the noise reduction to the structure. So if I go to something in the middle, I'm getting some noise reduction in the areas that were previously black, but not as much as in the sky. So I can find this sweet spot where I smooth out the noise in the building and still have the full effect on the sky. And we can move around a little bit and look at things like this detail here. When there's no adjustment at all, we get the full detail in the noise. When we fully apply the noise reduction, we obliterate the detail. But if we go in the middle, we get to a nice result where we retain the detail of the image, we improve the noise here such that it matches the sky and the sky looks really clean. So that's a second great way that you can use the mass density slider is actually on a smart filter mask. Now we did it for noise reduction here. This could have easily been sharpening the image where you want to sharpen something and maybe you need to smooth it out by making sure the areas you didn't paint on your mask are included as well. 
It could be something much more complex like using Luminar or Nick Color Effects Pro. Any filter you apply, when you're trying to bias to one part of the image, you might want to use mass density to just ensure some minimal amount of that filter gets shown everywhere else. Let's now take a look at a third great way of using mass density, which is going to be for any sort of blending or compositing. Now, I already did this image in a previous tutorial, so I'll link to it at the end so you can see the full edit from beginning to end. But just to quickly recap, I had a wide angle shot where the foreground waves look great, the sky looked great, but this tiny little C stack, and so I zoomed in with a longer lens, grabbed that, and then blended it together. Now, the challenge with a blend like this is when you're doing the blend, you're going to start off with a black mask on this layer. So let's recreate that. I'm going to alt click on the mask. This is where I would have started. And as I paint on this, I really don't know, did that rock on the underlying layer end here or here or here? It's very hard to know exactly what you're trying to brush in. Mass density can give us a temporary preview of where we're going. So if I just double click on the mask, I can bring down the mass density halfway. And now I see this underlying layer. So I can see the current image and I can see what I'm about to blend in from this layer. So really powerful visualization for any sort of blending. And I should have mentioned this earlier, but the density and feather controls we have here in the properties panel, you don't even need the properties panel. You can do all of this right through Lumenzia itself. So whenever you have a mask active, you should see this gray slider. And as you adjust it, what you're doing is feathering it. You can see the feather slider has moved to match. So it's the 220 feather here. If you want to work with the density instead, all you need to do is hold down alter option and click on the slider. And that converts to this yellow slider, which is density. So as I move this around, now I'm controlling the density in the image. So we'd have this image here at 100% density to start. I could just click in the middle of the density slider and visualize my layer. So all we need to do now is paint with white through a selection to fill in this area. So I'm going to hit B for my brush, make sure I've got a nice soft brush. I've got white paint, a little bit larger brush, and I just need my selection. The selection itself should be based on the rock that I'm going to paint in. So I'm going to temporarily disable this layer by shift clicking on it. And now I see the underlying content and do something like zone B to help target these darker midtones. That looks pretty good, but I want to customize it. So I'm just going to bring in my white slider a bit and bring in my gray slider. And I think that'll be a nice selection of the rock. So I'll just click on cell to convert that to a selection. So now with that selection, I can paint white and I know exactly where I need to paint because I've got this visualization using mass density to show me what I'm targeting. And all I really need to do is paint in just enough to kind of see the outline here. Once I get things going, I can turn off the density. It's all I need is to get started. So I'm going to turn this off because I don't want the density to bring in things outside of the C stack. So you definitely want to make sure you return it back to the full 100. And now that I can see where I'm going, I can just keep brushing through my selection and finish things. But you can see how nicely that helps give me something to aim for to help understand the scene and brush this in. I'm just going to quickly finish this because as I said, I covered it in a previous tutorial, but it just shows you how powerful mass density can be for any sort of compositing or blending work to really just give a gorgeous result and help you know exactly where those edges are for any sort of tricky blend. Now click to this next video to see the full focal length blending of the C stack.